Hey, trucked up guys and gals, are you as blown away as I am when it comes to what the heck is going on with the Cybertruck? This was supposed to usher in a new era for the electric truck. And holy crap, how that hasn't happened. It actually seems to have exposed something quite unnerving. But oh, how a lot of you know what is gonna get flung at you know who. So the problem with Tesla and Elon Musk is oh, when it even looks like this video might call into question the almighty genius powers and magical foresight of the electric car spaceship making he who cannot be shamed. Fire Don't say it! Don't come for you if you say it! Don't say it! You know, I'm not worried. This channel doesn't bow to fear or pressure. Hey loser! Did you just make a lame Harry Potter joke about the greatest voice for free speech ever? If you ever say anything bad about Mr. Musk, he'll staple your mouth shut and sue you for billions. In this video, we're diving into all the controversy, what some of it seems to expose, and how the Cybertruck that is available today might be one of the riskiest buys you could currently make. Holy crap, has it been a rough few months for the triangular beast that was supposedly pre-booked in the millions and what looked like the hottest and most anticipated vehicle to market, well, ever. It started back in March with you know, small things like plastic parts busting off when off-roading. Yeah, little things. Or having trouble uh, in the snow, in the sand, on the road. But that led to the discovery that the promised front and rear locking differentials were coming soon, even though people had already paid for them, making it rather useless as an off-roader. Just days ago, this was further reinforced by Motor Trend when, in a head-to-head -head test of Rivian R1T, Ford F-150 Lightning, and the Cybertruck said even the Ford Lightning did better off-roading without anywhere near the same ground clearance. In more off-road examples, it seems that the parts holding the wheels on weren't as uh, robust as advertised, since some have, uh, well, they've fallen off. But hey, to be fair, off-roading busts parts. If you go off-roading, man, you're gonna break shit, okay? There's just no way around it. Stuff gets broken when you go off-road. And yet, we haven't seen the same fails from a much larger off-road fleet, the likes of Rivian, to the same degree in the same applications. So that's kind of saying something. Tesla has no one but itself to blame for not living up to unnaturally high expectations because they're the ones who set those unnaturally high expectations, being that they threw down the gauntlet and made all these claims, outright declaring this was going to be a superior, brilliant Baja performer. So far, it's been anything but stuck in sand, snow, mud, gravel, and high-centered when it was rock crawling, and once failing when paired up against the likes of a world off-road leader, the Subaru Crosstech. And if that happens to be a foundation series, it brings into question the $120,000 US price tag before anything else is even factored in. But unfortunately, there is a lot more to be factored in as the bad news just kept getting worse. Once people got into these things and started driving them, other issues came to the forefront, not that anyone could see them. Turns out the Cybertruck has some of the crappiest visibility out there, and not only with existing EV trucks, but trucks in general. That wasn't as bad as realizing that, unlike other vehicles with things like illuminated frunks and beds, if you happen to get stuck in the Cybertruck vault without a light, you're likely gonna be staying there and not getting out, and no one will be able to hear you if you're calling for help. Tiny things like this started to reveal a trend of corners being cut in favor of more Tesla profit margins versus less benefits and considerations for consumers. Let's not even get into the horrible fit and finish videos and photos. I mean, how do you possibly make this thing look finished? Really, I mean, <laughs> but that's kind of, you know, wasn't that really the original appeal? The dystopian, polygon, future, CGI-rendered gaming beast in the real world? Well, it better be for anyone who's buying it, because that's what they're gonna get in all its rough, 
prototype misaligned glory. And that leaves us with a great segue to corner cutting, literally. Wanna slice some carrots? With the handy Cybertruck from KTEL, you can grab a bushel and simply insert your favorite vegetable or body part at the corner of your frunk and press the close button. It's also never good when the aero covers are eating chunks out of your tires. Tesla has since stopped shipping these pricey trigonometry mobiles with any wheel covers until they have rectified the aforementioned rubber gnawing. In the meantime, not having them will impact range performance even more, which by the way, has proven to be nowhere near what was advertised. Out of spec motoring gang found out that the absolute best they could get out of a Cybertruck was 254 miles. And weeks later, many Cybertruck owners complained that their personal square minus a sidecar was barely getting 200 miles. And having to juice up more frequently exposed even more problems that should have long been identified before this thing rolled off the assembly floor. Kyle Connor of Out of Spec Reviews uncovered that Tesla's own CCS adapter didn't fit into the weirdly shaped Cybertruck charging port. That's just an outright glaring lack of care and detail. Towing proved to be abysmal when Jerry Rig everything showed only 90 miles in cold weather, while Kyle Connor clocked in at between 90 and 160 miles depending on conditions. But when having to refuel, Kyle also unearthed that the Cybertruck's charging times were mediocre at best. I mean, what gives? We then found out that it didn't have FSD, full self-driving, even though it was the most expensive EV truck you could buy, other than the top trim sold out Hummer EV first edition. And then boom, the Cybertruck Owners Club lit up when it was further revealed that it also doesn't have autopilot that you basically get on a base Model 3, but apparently not with this $120,000 origami isosceles thingy. But the negative news trench that Cybertruck just got itself stuck into soon sunk into a FUD gorge. It turns out that if a bird poops on your hood, the wind blows from the northeast at six knots and there's like, I don't know, light breezes of tree pollen. Some road grit gets churned up while driving at insane speeds. Or basically any material whatsoever plops onto your super strong paint-free stainless steel super beast. You must immediately remove it with cleaner or it might discolor or alter the surface, or cause a chain reaction and split the space-time continuum and open the multiverse, Matt! Then rust spots started appearing all over the place, like, you know, when it rains. But according to Tesla, these are simply environmental contaminants and can be wiped away. But the FUD machine had been fed. And soon, wild media stories indicated that a new pastime was sweeping the nation, whereby one could stand outside and watch a Cybertruck corrode before their very eyes. But try as one might to fight the rust and poop fud, there was no covering up the 10,000 fingerprints and smears that seemed as permanent as the world's longest windshield wiper on the Cybertruck. In all seriousness, this thing makes your fridge door look like it's self-cleaning. Then came the road trip videos with touchscreen blackouts, starting fails, people being locked out of their truck and no way to reach Tesla, warning lights and power downs, and a growing number of nightmare scenarios where owners ran into serious challenges with very few Cybertrucks yet on the road. Most recently, Tesla halted production because it seems their accelerator pedal covers are sticking and having resulted in some rather unfortunate uh, experiences for unsuspecting drivers. Now, sure, you can say that, hey, come on, man, this is the first of the ramp ups and there's going to be some glitches. Some, sure, the Titanic had glitches and about ramping up, it 
took Tesla over four freaking years to ramp this triangle up before production even started. And now it looks more like an unfinished prototype than a made for prime time blockbuster than it did when it rolled out for the first time. But that's not the best part. That's still to come and a damn good reason to second guess dropping enough money to buy yourself a lakeside cabin on a door wedge with wheels. Why is it that a startup like Rivian is out towing, out hauling, out ranging, out off roading, and out classing Tesla's EV truck flagship, even charging faster, but with supposedly a larger battery pack, even with Tesla's tooted 48 volt architecture. Well, the first evidence that something else is going on came when Sandy Monroe and the gang at Monroe and Associates got out the can opener and pulled back the lid on one of these babies. Lo and behold, the battery pack was missing half of its batteries. No, really, I'm not kidding around. It was half empty. I'll provide a link to the video in the description below. So. Let's just pause for a second and let that sink in. I couldn't help myself. I mean, anyway, for well over $100,000, this is where the Cybertruck stands right now. Number one, it has comparable or less towing range while also having a comparable or less overall range than its EV truck competitors. Worse, the rapidly approaching release of the consumer version Silverado EV claims to blow the doors off of all four current EV trucks on the market. Number two, it has comparable or slower charging speed than all of its EV competitors. Number three, Cybertruck has comparable or worse off-road capabilities than all of its EV truck competitors. Number four, it has less interior amenities and finish than all of its competitors. Number five, the truck has the worst exterior fit and finish issues compared to all of its EV truck competitors. And number six, almost lastly, the Cybertruck has half of its batteries missing, making it one of the smallest battery pack EV trucks for the highest retail price. That one's a bit of a clincher in all of this. It's a hard pill to swallow for any potential buyer. Aren't battery packs the most costly component of EVs in general? More importantly, what exactly makes the Cybertruck dictate such a high price? I know the answer, and so do you. Demand. And there it is, right? Well, don't call the waiter for the bill and after dinner mint just yet there, buddy. We haven't reached the last dish of the seven course meal yet. And here it is. Number seven, demand isn't up. And the proof of that is what's going on. As you have likely heard in the news recently, Tesla just irreverently fired well over 10% of its entire global workforce while cutting back the hours to the Cybertruck line. Why would a manufacturer scale back production on a truck that supposedly has millions of pre-orders and will become its all-time best seller? Bottlenecks? Battery constraints? Rising cancellations? Whatever the answer is, a more important question begins to emerge. Is Tesla taking its current loyal Cybertruck buyers to the cleaners? Are they deliberately pumping out the cheapest version of this thing that they can possibly get away with to fund its ramp? Or could it be as simple as Tesla not having enough batteries to make enough of these things to meet demand, so they deliberately slashed the range and removed half the battery count to get more Cybertrucks out the door? However one wishes to slice it, I see this as one big red flag waving wildly, warning me, Freaking buy it yet, you EV truck obsessed dumbass. It doesn't actually matter for me anyway, because here in Canada, no one can get one anyway until in 2025, 2026 at the earliest, they say. Now, if that were to change, well, that would speak loudly to the plummeting pre-order fills. Either way, I'm not touching this red hot poker until things cool down and all is revealed. If you don't think these things are going to get a lot cheaper while rolling out a lot more features, better range, and better towing and hauling capabilities, I want at least a good keg's worth of whatever flavor of Kool-Aid you've been drinking. The most deviant yet brilliant Tesla play that would elegantly explain away a lot of this 
and why the battery pack is half empty and why almost every spec and pledge from 2019 never materialized is that this isn't the main entree, that the Cybertruck of 2019 has yet to be launched. What if the production costs are actually much lower than currently predicted? And Tesla has always had enough 4680s to fill every order as Giga Texas achieves full capacity and that the remaining 50% of that pack will get filled when the time is right. What does that Cybertruck look like if it now has a battery pack close to equivalent to the Silverado EV and Hummer at somewhere around 200 kilowatt hour capacity? What capabilities will it exhibit in range, towing, and hauling? Based on even the most conservative estimates, Tesla would already be able to exceed every one of its 2019 targets for this truck. But why do it now? If Tesla can roll out a whack of lesser trucks and sell every one of them at a massive premium to loyal first adopters to offset the ramp up costs. One way or the other, Tesla has not been very upfront or above board with their customers on the Cybertruck. One thing is for certain, the hardware of a Cybertruck in a year from now will be exponentially better than any Cybertruck produced today. And that tells me that trucked up EVs won't be spending a single dime until all the first adopters have paid their tab and cleared the deck for the rest of us. If you like what you're watching and want to keep the channel healthy and growing, please support me in any way you can by visiting my Patreon coffee and flat tire fund or clicking that like, subscribe, and bell notification icon below. That's what keeps the tires rolling and the batteries charged. As always, thanks for watching.